Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex Technical Analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. And uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find my analysis useful. Um, also, the uh, technical analysis uh, charts are timestamped in the description box below in case you want to skip to those, but I prefer if you really kind of watch the fundamentals and sentiment <clears throat> analysis as that's what really drives the market and gives you your uh, really your uh, your trading bias and which way you should be buying and selling and understanding of value so um getting into the fundamentals and, and uh, risk on and risk off sentiment for last week um and we'll go into this week as well but last week was an interesting one. So, um, first of all, um, you know, last week, Monday, we had uh, the major news was really about the um, the Australia, sorry, the New Zealand uh, cash rate. But before that, we had the Australian cash rate that came in as expected. And um, so uh, statement by Philip Lowe, governor of the RBA, said at the meeting on the day uh, that the board decided to leave cash rates unchanged at 1%. So there was really no surprises with regards to the uh, the Australian um, uh, interest rates, whether they were going to uh, cut further. They've cut twice already this year, so it was expected that they were going to end up holding. <clears throat> the main surprise really this week was the New Zealand dollar actually cutting more than expected and um, yeah so that caught the market really kind of off guard and so you know a stunning decision um, RBNZ Reserve Bank of New Zealand delivers huge surprise with 50 basis points cut to the official cash rate banks quickly react uh, mortgage cuts and dollar the, the dollar drops so um, that caught a lot of traders um, off guard and there was uh, a uh, trading opportunity there to get short um, live if you were up at uh, well, uh, London time would have been three in the morning and then um, really the next kind of major important news I mean China had their uh, CPI which was okay and uh, the pound the pound um, the British economy really shrinking um, month on month pretty much went to zero it was expected at 0 0.1 so pretty much flatlined and we can see you know in the um in the summary <clears throat> right so it says so it's official uk economy uh, it contracted by 0 0.2 in the second quarter worse performance than stagnation predicted on average by economists beforehand and uh, it hit new lows against the dollar and it just continues to sell off with you know the uncertainty with brexit um and because uh, what businesses really are uh, are going to be putting in any new investments into the you know the UK economy until really Brexit is sorted. You know we've been saying this for months and months. Why get long on the pound just because you know prices pull back for a week or two doesn't mean you should you know start to look to get uh, long. I mean there are obviously trading opportunities technically, but the overall should be to the downside. Um, <clears throat> so the pound is going to continue. And expected to continue to really kind of fall um, and then uh, you have the Canadian dollar right terrible numbers from from employment and the unemployment rate went up as well um, not great at all um, and uh, now the shift in focus potentially now is Canada job slowdown boosts case for Bank of Canada rate cuts again um, my uh, my analysis in the uh, private group we've been talking about this and uh, now the focus is now shifting to uh, Canada jobs for me and for us the, the Canada is Canadian dollar is a sell yeah and now we're getting um, you know the markets really starting to uh, uh, agree that um, you know the data confirms uh, this 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 uh, fundamental bias so that happened last week um, so this week, what we have looking for the week ahead, um, we have the US we're publishing inflation rate. That's going to be very important. Retail sales, um, industrial production, housing data, and uh, Flash Michigan consumer um, 
consumer sentiment but out of that the inflation rate is going to be important because obviously it affects um, uh, the interest rate and what the Fed are going to do going forward with either continuing to cut interest rates or if they're going to hold if they they probably hold interest rates if inflation is probably at target or just a bit more uh, elsewhere other important releases include UK unemployment wage growth inflation and retail sales I don't think any of that really matters too much um, and what I mean by that is even if there is positive unemployment um, potential wage growth it's all about Brexit and even if inflation is up um, you know and, and I think inflation probably should be up because what happens is, is inflation goes higher as the pound weakens or what that's what should happen anyway um, but Brexit is really um, is weighing on the pounds economy eurozone trade balance and industrial uh, production Germany uh, quarter two figures I think that's going to be important as well as Germany is the eurozone's powerhouse so anything that affects Germany and if their GDP figures second quarter are poor then that's going to have a knock-on effect on the whole of Europe and really the euro currency China industrial output retail sales fixed asset investment and house prices index I guess that's, that's more to do with probably some sort of risk on sentiment or whether the global um uh, economy is slowing down as China is the biggest economy in the world. Japan machinery orders, corporate goods and prices, um, and Australia consumer and business morale wage price index. That would be um, something to probably look looked at as well as that's, that's an inflation measure and employment figures. And again, that will be um, uh, important for the Australian dollar so lots to look forward to. Um, the main ones being probably the um, any kind of inflation. Um, uh, readings so uh, fundamentals and sentiment over now let's look at the price charts and starting off in the Dow Jones dollar index and the Dow Jones from last week um, uh, pretty much Dow Jones dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro yen the pound and uh, the Australian dollar um, the pound I mean sorry that the dollar really has been um, you know strengthening even though there has been a rate cut, so you probably expect a pullback at some point. Um, the dollar is really the best of the worst, to be fair. We're in a low interest rate um, or low inflation environment, so all central banks are really trying to uh, get ahead of the curve by cutting interest rates. It's had not necessarily the desirable effect, and Donald Trump wants a, a weaker dollar as well, so he can have a bit of leverage regarding the uh, trade negotiations with China. But this week, what we had was prices really didn't hold at this uh, demand zone, and what you, how you use the Dow Jones Dollar Index is really just to look for potential um, strength in the dollar um, on the dollar index, and then you would go to the uh, other dollar crosses and look for you know dollar strength or dollar weakness right so at this uh one two three eight level um we've seen the dollar kind of stagnate i say stagnate but really kind of hold at that level and go kind of sideways um so there is um some sort of demand here not necessarily the strongest level of demand but that de at demand zone here wasn't necessarily strong and also remember as well you, the best really place to kind of buy you know the dollar if you're looking at you know a low to a high you're waiting for more of a pullback at the at the end of the day you're buying if you're buying the dollar you're buying the dollar at the highs around here so you prefer you know kind of like pullbacks to potential you know fair value 50 percent you know zones so if we go <clears throat> look at the actual chart um we can delete that now what i'm saying is, is between this low and this high yeah if that's an expensive area, right, and that being because we know that for sure because prices didn't go high, there was no demand there. There was definitely strong demand here. So an expensive bargain area, fifty percent is what we call fair value. So if you are looking to buy the dollar, you know you're looking for you know fair value prices, you know preferably. Um, but if prices still start to go higher, that could be confirmation on your other um, dollar forex pairs. So going into the week what you want to look for is if you're looking to short the dollar potentially if inflation comes out this week and it's not looking great either you know look for confirmation within that supply zone or what you probably may may see is if prices start to 
come down and then come back up back up into this uh, created supply zone before looking at <clears throat> short trades so um, that's pretty much your options and again just use that for um, confirmation and uh, I think the dollar may probably um, look to potentially you know sell off and pull back any pullbacks I'm again I'm a buyer of the dollar as again uh, it's the, really the dog with the least fleas when it comes to uh, you know the the its economy and um, and overall bigger picture of macroeconomics <clears throat> moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen um, this uh, well, from last week really we, and the week before previous week we had um, a lot of risk off sentiment and prices came down into this long-term demand zone and has reacted around here. So um, risk off still being um, in focus, but less um, risk off last week. There was a bit of a demand zone from way back in uh, uh, March 2018. And then we had obviously a bit of bounce off here and second touches because this would be the first touch second touches are are decent as well so third touches i start to think to myself i don't i'm not really trying to get um involved in that um type of price action because the more a zone is touched the weaker it becomes so um zooming back in um if we are looking at getting long on the dollar and we see some decent inflation numbers then this is you know a buy on the lower time frame as we touch this uh this demand zone here if you are looking at trying to get short technically we've made a supply zone right here as we made lower highs lower lows this isn't drop based rally rally based drop this is proof of value trading um so uh what you'd probably want to see is uh, a move back up into this supply zone and then look for potential short trades. Again, the Japanese yen <coughs> strengthens in a risk off environment. And the risk off environment is where there's a lot of uncertainty, um, whether it's political, monetary, um, you know, things like war and things like that. So um, with risk off really kind of being um, in the spotlight at the moment, this could be a decent shorting opportunity, for example, on a lower time frame. You know, like maybe, maybe like the four hour, one hour, or whatever you were, uh, you um, time frame that you do trade. We use the daily demand zones, <clears throat> you know, for our overall bigger picture um, uh, analysis. And then we look, you know, to uh, capitalize and enter on the lower time frame. So those are pretty much your options either a buy right now as we come into that demand zone or and then looking for a sell looking for a bit more detail around that zone you're probably looking at that area there as <clears throat> this was where you've got a bit of support a bit of resistance in that zone as well so not only do you have potential value from a supply zone you also have other technical traders looking to get short at where support and support and and uh, resistance zones so um you're going to have potentially um you know sell trades within this area of supply <clears throat> moving on to the dollar swiss and the dollar swiss this week or last week um, you know there was no demand here I was looking at um, potentially a trade around this zone but didn't provide no type of entry and now we've come down into this lower demand zone which I do like I haven't entered yet um, looking for a potential entry um, around this area if it gives me one but um, I think the uh, the dollar again is the uh, stronger out of the two and the Swiss franc at the moment according to the Swiss National Bank is highly valued very highly valued <clears throat> what does that mean they want a cheaper Swiss franc overall um, so they may want to intervene at some point um, but until that day I'll be still buying the, um, the dollar Swiss so looking for potential entries to the upside if this demand zone doesn't work out then I will be looking at 
definitely this nice fresh area of demand right there we can see that this level you know has been touched um, if we look at the demand zone from from here let's look at the demand right this was the this was the best entry to really get uh, to take and then we've touched here again so this is the second touch second touch is on as good as the first touch so I'm not saying that they don't work out but they have a low probability of working out um, but it could still work out nevertheless and uh, I'll be looking for potential entries for the guys that are uh, in in the room with me in the telegram room you know what we'll be looking for you know the stop hunt entry this is looking very nice for a stop hunt uh, trade setup so uh, we'll be looking closely at that and again if that doesn't work out we'll be looking at buy trades if prices do come down to this area right here if you're looking to sell the uh, Swiss franc again you'll be looking for either prices to come all the way up here and look for a short trade like that or you'll be looking for prices to break this zone yeah create a lower high and a lower low and then look for prices to come back to this supply zone before looking at getting short. So those are <coughs> your overall options if you're looking to get short and take advantage of risk off. Um, moving on to the dollar CAD. The dollar CAD. Um, this week there was a supply zone entry pin bar. I always said that I'm looking for a, uh, a pullback, <clears throat> looking to buy the dollar over the CAD. Um, CAD is a bit weak, and you can see where you know what's what's pretty much happened. So um, we've got a move up and now move down. And that's back into actually demand. So this could be a um, a nice trading opportunity this week, and I think it just might be with the. CAD now potentially and going back to the news article, you know, Canada job slowdown boost case for Bank of Canada rate cut. Now the market may start to <clears throat> factor in a rate cut, and if that's you know the rate cut would be um, quite beneficial um, for the dollar, the U um, the US dollar. So if we look at a, a live chart, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there was a uh, get rid of that supply zone. And this is why we we really want to <clears throat> use um, fundamentals with supply and demand zones because you know the Canadian dollar regardless was wasn't gonna be a sell, you know, against the um, the, the US dollar of course price can do what it wants and the market is you know random but the higher probability trade really wasn't to get short it looked like a really good supply zone but it's all about value and understanding value and um, you know now we've got proof of value we know that the, the, the US dollar has been a bargain here now potentially with a shift if a shift in um, uh, you know Canadian sentiment potentially we're looking at buy trades here buy trades around here and that's just from a, um, a fundamental perspective if you are looking to you know take any uh, short trades on the uh, the dollar CAD because <clears throat> there could be some obviously surprises with the US dollar then you'd be looking at really you know uh, another um, rejection off of here um, before looking at getting short um, again you can see where prices reacted off of this supply zone so there was an opportunity to get short around here this week but I think preferably looking for some long trades around here or <clears throat> around this uh, 1.34 level um, what else have we got here yeah I think that's about it let me just clear these arrows off uh, next is the New Zealand dollar US dollar and this week we had um, the surprise um, you know uh, 50 uh, or 0.5 uh, rate cut so there was an opportunity to get long before the news but the surprise really kind of pushed prices below that demand zone this week so Let's look at updating the chart. 
so we can pretty much clear that demand zone and that demand zone I said last week that it's probably likely to break anyway because you know this demand zone had been touched several times if we look back at you know the origin of this demand zone here you can look where it's been touched once twice so the third time you know is never the, the one to really take and then obviously prices you know broke through with the assistance of the uh the rate cuts so where do we stand at the moment um at the moment there's really no supply zones until you know really all the way up here um no hidden supply or anything like that so i think there is supply around here to be fair but i'm not going to draw it in because it doesn't really fit my rules of what the definition of supply would be um, when it comes to candlestick formations um so at the moment you're either looking for lower lows and then look for prices to come back up into that zone if prices do start to come up what you want to see is higher highs higher lows first and then you want to see lower highs lower lows that would create the supply zone right here and then you're looking for prices to come up to that supply zone and then look for a sell trade so that would be ultimately you know the formation that you would need to see with bullish and bearish candles before looking at um getting uh short on this currency pair further up if you are looking to get long let's see if there's any um any demand i think it was demand from really down here yeah and that level's held a little bit so this is where we have some demand and if we go back a little bit more i mean to try and use any kind of demand zones from 2016 aren't you know isn't going to be the best but as long as it's there you know um it's something to just you know keep in mind on the chart um so uh you, in order to get again long you could get long you know right now i'd probably look for this 64 um 0 0.64 um round number before looking at getting long but um again i'm buying a dollar us dollar over the uh new zealand dollar uh such so as my preference and um yeah, I think that, you know any kind of buy trades you'll be looking at going to the low and then looking for some, maybe something like this and then looking for a long trade like that on the lower time frame chart. Moving on to the pound dollar. The pound dollar um, has really just been under a lot of pressure. Again, there was an opportunity did have a bit of a supply zone in here. Prices pulled back to that uh, 1.22 round number before getting short. So um, again, there was supply here, taking out all the stops probably below from every, anyone who's uh, looking to get long in the pound. So let's look at pound dollar. Pound dollar not looking great at all, really isn't. Um, so right now, again, you'd be looking at any kind of pullbacks into this supply zone before looking at short trades. As far as long trades goes, um, I think you'd be a brave, a very brave person to uh, look for that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this all the way down here, and I'm going to move that. And let's see if it no, it doesn't not yet. No, right, I'll keep that just so that it touches the end of the candlestick. Yeah, so right there. Just so that we've got a bit of clarity with regards to you know the supply zone and, and the uh, demand zone. But um, again, it's not the usual way of drawing um, supply and demand, but there is you know some demand here. Again, even though it was from October you know, uh, 2016, um, it, it's, uh, you know, the, as far as the way we draw supply and demand and identifying demand, there was demand here back then. Doesn't mean it's going to be the same thing now, but just for technical analysis purposes, I'm going to keep that where it is, um, as the bottom of this level as well is where traders will be looking at. Um, you know, it's going to be quite significant for for the pound as well. And there was a bit of a level where you have 
traders will be looking at here for a level of potential support as it was support in the past and um, again don't know how significant that is going to be but um, my bias is you really to try and get short so um, you just waiting really for pullbacks to try and look for short trades but if you are looking for long trades I think probably now around this 1.20 round number would be the the, uh, the trade to take um, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar from last week we had a nice push up I was looking at potential short trades within this supply zone but there was no price action um, here so couldn't take any trades and then there was um, some decent price action here um, I'm not actually in this uh, euro dollar um, short I wanted to I was looking for something more specific and it didn't really you know occur so um, yeah I think the euro euro dollar um, if you did get into this it's decent you've got enough trade you've got enough space to kind of like the downside as well um, so a decent decent um, entry around here let's take away this supply zone as there's no supply there and also what I'm going to do is update this level in this demand zone right here quite a wide demand zone but if you are taking that demand zone then that level there within that demand is going to be the first area to look for potential long trades and then really the bottom here is going to be nice um, if you're looking to buy the euro me no not buying a euro uh, not at all not with uh, Mario Draghi looking to add stimulus potentially within the next uh, you know month or so um, doesn't mean that this can't continue to go higher because it could take out all the stops you know this is there's a I can probably bet there's a lot of traders getting short around here at this zone and these zones a lot of stop losses above there so we could see prices go a bit higher taking out those stops and then start to fall away or even start to maybe make higher highs higher lows in the lead up to the uh, the announcement ECB announcement and the higher this goes just means that you're buying at a better price as far as buying um, the, the US dollar at a better exchange rate so um, a couple of attempts will be decent to to get short or we could see prices really just um, you know fall away and start to sell off as we go into the um, uh, uh, I guess the, uh, the, the the coming month and when Mario Draghi may want to announce um, potential stimulus. It's a buy the rumor, sell the facts. Whether he will or he won't is uh, is something different. But I think the market will be pricing in and looking to price in the um, the stimulus. But I think the focus right now is on probably the dollar first, and then what the um, the ECB does so if you got in here on a lower time frame you know any kind of uh, um, uh, entry around here you know on the uh, hourly or you know whatever time frame you trade you know decent I think but I'll be waiting for something just slightly potentially slightly higher around here before looking to get short um, moving on to the euro yen and the euro yen last week we did have a bit of a reaction here but this demand zone really didn't you know hold it wasn't necessarily the most significant uh, there was a bit of risk off uh, coming into the market as well so if you look at where that was it was way back there and I think that level's pretty much gone now <sighs> it's a bit of an um, awkward one but we'd want to see proof of value with, with, with regards to um, whether you should be buying or selling so you'd really want prices to really kind of prove that there is demand here before looking at getting long at these levels or if you are looking to get short then you'd be looking for prices to kind of break this this area here right and then look for pullbacks into a supply zone and that's if you're buying the Japanese yen. If you're buying the euro, 
like I said before, you wait for proof of value first before looking at getting long, or you'd have to wait for price to kind of come down to this longer term demand zone. And again, that demand zone was created way back in 2017, so I don't know how significant that's going to be. Um, uh, but I'd probably say wait for some sort of proof of value first, wait for the markets to say that there is, you know, demand there, and then wait for pullbacks a lot of traders try to you know pick the lows and there are times where we can pick the lows and there's times where you really want to maybe just wait for the market to prove that there is and have a bit of patience so um this is really what you want to see before looking to uh, get to get um to get long on the euro and remember with supply and demand the whole premise behind supply and demand is not the fact that you're looking at a technical pattern, is you're understanding where, where value was, yeah? So if we're looking at this area here, you know, this was obviously a bargain price for the Japanese yen against the euro. Hence, we had prices fall away. So if prices come down here, you know, come up here again, and nothing has changed regarding the fundamentals and maybe risk sentiment is still the same, then, this should be a bargain again for the Japanese yen, right? That's basically what we're doing. We're, we're understanding what's happened in the market previously and then understanding if price come back, comes, comes back here, is that's gonna be a bargain again. Um, so let's move on to the Australian dollar, US dollar. And I think the Aussie, yeah, the Aussie ended up holding at this lower demand zone and I think the Aussie may want to <coughs> uh, move a bit higher um, but I'm overall I'm still going to be short on this, uh, this this currency pair it's just now looking for where to potentially get short so again um, if you're looking to get long you'd be looking for price to um, come down to anywhere around here before looking at long trades if you're looking at um, any kind of short trades either you're going to look for price to make a new lower low and then look for a sell trade back into that supply zone there or again as previously you know pointed out what you're looking for is kind of like a higher high and then look for lower lows and then look for prices to come back into what would be this would be the supply zone right here and then look for kind of like a short trade you know to the downside so that's really you know the pattern that i'd be looking for before looking at short trades and finally we have the aussie yen and aussie yen suffering from a risk off sentiment you can see from you know from last week prices have kind of stabilized around here and this larger demand zone we can zoom out a little bit so it was really a demand zone from way back when but you can't even see it on here but we'll look at it on you know a chart Aussie yen yeah, it was way back from you know July 09 so um, we are seeing a bit of proof of value, but we want to see, um, you know, prices really kind of make higher highs, higher lows before looking at getting um, long. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this down a little bit as well, just so that it's a bit clearer. Yeah, I'll leave that like that. And so if you are looking to potentially get long, um, preferably what you want to see is higher highs, higher lows being made and then prices come back and then look for the uh, a long trade. If you're looking at getting short, you look for prices to make lower lows, lower highs and then wait for a pullback before getting short. Um, and again, I would probably say wait for, you know, maybe some sort of risk on sentiment to kind of come into the market. Risk on sentiment would be um, where you have, uh, I guess, the trade wars aren't necessarily in focus. I think the Australian dollar and their economy is actually doing okay. It's doing quite well from last week. You know, you did have, where's the Australian? Um, uh, was it the week before? I think it was the week before. 
um, I think you had the Australian dollar, or was it? Yeah, so, you know, CPI was decent, 0 0.6 above, you know, estimates. Um, and uh, there was some other Aussie news that was actually quite decent as well. Yeah, so you had retail sales as well, uh, was okay. So it looks like the interest rate cuts from the central bank um, are starting to take effect um, on you know the Australian dollar or the Australian economy. So not it's not all necessarily doom and gloom. And even in moments of risk off, there will be pullbacks. So um, I think this might be decent for a, for a pullback. But let the market prove that, and then wait for kind of pullbacks within that zone. So, uh, but if risk off continues, then it's literally just trying to get short. And actually, this is a bit of a supply zone right here. So if you are looking to get short, you'd be looking for really price to come up to this uh, 72.50 level on a lower time frame. Let's go down to maybe the one hourly. Yeah. So I would say anything above that zone, that's a fresher area of, of supply around here, 72.50 before looking at any short trades if you want to take advantage of risk off so that's it for this week um i hope you enjoyed the analysis uh, let me know if you have any questions and i'll try and get back to you as soon as possible um and for those people who have emailed me and i haven't got back to you yet don't worry i i definitely see you and i will be getting back to you as i've had a lot of uh questions and emails and it's summer as well you know busy 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 um but uh next week um we won't there won't be a um uh, a, a weekly analysis so um it'll be probably the following week or maybe the week after It'll take some time off so um guys i hope you have a uh, great week and actually if i don't speak to you have a great summer as well and um just manage your risk go for more than you risk and um yeah hope you guys have a great trading week and take care